All right, so um, refresher, Ka is going to be the equilibrium uh, expression for an acid. Um, it doesn't seem like a big deal now, but you do need to be careful that you're writing a little a and that you're using the right um, expression because um, those mathematical relationships that we just talked about, whether it's Ka times Kb is 10 to the negative 14. You got to know what you're talking about, okay? So um, you can see it's just a product of reactants, and of course we're going to omit water because water is a liquid. Right? Everything's cool. Should feel nice and homey to you. You should be like, yeah, I already know the things. Good. All right, so um, even strong acids, they're going to have a K value. Uh, hydrochloric acids, K values in the millions, so like 2 million or something, which means that um, if the Ka of hydrochloric acid is 2 times 10 to the 6 power positive 6, that means that um, this times this divided by this is 2 million, which means that this and this are pretty big and this is about Okay, um, that's how that works. Math is fun. So you should feel very comfortable with the fact that Ka values, as I increase in Ka values, the um, strength of the acid increases. And so nitric acid here and hydrochloric acid here, those were both on the list of six strong acids, right? And so you notice they both have a positive Ka value. So that means that equilibrium, their products, which will be the conjugate acid and the conjugate base, will be favored. And how are we feeling? Um, notice the weak acids. Um, the reactant here with the hydrocyanic acid, that means that when I put hydrocyanic acid in water, it mostly stays HCN. And HCN particles, they're neutral, and they don't, they're not going to give you those H's to calculate pH unless they break up. And so this is not going to affect pH as much as something that breaks up more. So there's kind of the application for that. Slide 4 of 72, good times. Um, base dissociation constant, same idea. Um, here we see the base is ammonia. I put it in some water, we get hydroxide ions and ammonia. There's my re uh, products of my reactant, and I omit water once again. Um, when you're doing these equilibrium uh, questions, you know, the first step is going to be the right to write the equilibrium expression. So um, it's important. And notice here the Kb, it's just like Ka, but now it's the um, dissociation constant for a base, so it'll be a um, very large number. Okay, thanks. Um, I'll kind of want to know what it is now, I'll be honest with you. Um, but notice these are all negative, so if I put ammonia in water, um, I can see that ammonia will still be the predominant species in the solution, not hydroxide or ammonium. Okay, um, so and as I go down this list, they're going to break down uh, or dissociate in water even less. Stronger the base, larger the KB. Still good. Happy yeah. times. Still, huh? 10 to the 20th. 10 to the 20th. Okay, so um, that is that is a very large number. Thank you for looking it up. Okay, so just told you guys, reminded you that P, the letter P, if I'm applying a PKA, that just means take the negative log of KA. All right? So that means that I'm going to take the negative log of Ka. Um, so <clears throat> by PKB, that means that I'm going to have to take the negative log of Kb. And so um, when you do that, they rearrange formulas all quick and like in a magic trick. I don't like that crap. Um, <laughs> let me uh, let me help you out with that. Um, so if I was um, to give or be given uh, the PKA for an acid is you know 4.2. And they want to have me solve for Ka. Well, that means that <clears throat> the negative log, I don't need a formula sheet, I can use my head, okay? The negative log of Ka is 4.2. Now, what you're going to do, um, you know that 10 to the whatever makes log go away, but what people forget to do, this is kind of important, you got to isolate your variable as much as possible. And so to do that, we do need to divide both sides by negative 1, which will give us the log of Ka is equal to negative 4.2. Now make that log go away. Remember, I'm going to raise it um, as power 10. And then, so Ka would be equal to whatever my calculator tells me 10 to the negative 4.2 is. Okay. That, that slide that we were looking at had it just less like a magic trick. I don't like that. The, ne the negative sign, the whole, you know, <clears throat> thinking about um, 
bringing that uh, and dividing it by negative one like I just showed you, that's the most common error. All right, so check out how this looks. Um, I'm going to make this go away because I want to show you how to do it. Um, so the PKA for hydrocyanic acid is 9.31. Now remember, just a second ago, um, I showed you the K value for hydrocyanic acid. Hold on, I'm going to move the work. So the KA value for hydrocyanic acid is 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10. Um, that, this basically means when you get a KA value, that number, this is the KA. See what I just did there? Right, because if I take the negative log of it, then I chop the tree down and put the sun. So when you see a Ka value that's big, positive, that means that the Ka is going to be little. Because you put that up on a 10 and you make it negative. Negative exponents are little tiny numbers. See what I'm saying? So that's the so my answer when I get done should be for the Ka value should be somewhere around 10 to the 9, 10 to the 10. See what I'm doing? The reason I say 10 to the 10 is because it's above nine. See what I mean? Okay. Um, it's hard to estimate, you know, to that level of specificity. Um, but I did that on purpose. I'm gonna go back. All right. So anyway, uh, pKa is equal to nine point three one. So um, the negative log of Ka, right? And when you see a p, you should make negative log. Negative log. Negative log of Ka is equal to 9.31. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, divide both sides by negative 1 or multiply both sides by negative 1 or whatever you're going to do. So Ka, excuse me, the log of Ka is equal to negative 9.31. So 10 to the, 10 to the, so Ka is 10 to the negative 9.31, which I just showed you, right? Um, and then you got to push buttons in your calculator and um, you push them like this. That's how you do it. And you get um, 4.89 times 10 to the negative 10. How does that make you feel? Okay. And so in your head, like you kind of, you can't just autopilot this stuff. This means that the equilibrium uh, expression, which would be, This, this is equal to brackets, brackets around this, brackets around this, divided by brackets around that. Like, that's what we're doing. That's the thing. So, <clears throat> what's going to happen here in a little while is, in, in a little while, I mean, like 10 minutes from now, um, we're going to have to do problems with the ice table, get the stuff at the bottom of the ice table in the equilibrium row, and they'll give us a PKB or PKA and we'll have to switch it so we can set it equal. So, that's where this is going. But for right now, how did that go for you? You okay? Having such a good time. Y'all 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 good so far? Okay. All right, so here's the deal. I already kind of explained it to you. I told you that um, PKA, P means negative log up. So if we're just going to estimate this, and you will have to kind of estimate this on multiple choice tests because you don't have a calculator, right? PKA, or excuse me, yeah, PKA, when it's negative 6.3, in my head I have to see that is on a 10 with a negative sign. So negative, negative 6.3. So that the KA should be something like 6 to the 6, you see? Okay, and so this should be, um, this is about 10 to the first power, but a little bit more than that. It's 10 to the first power is 10, so that makes sense, right? Um, this is 10 to the you know, negative 2, because that's 2, and then it's negative log of it, right? And so, 1, 2, okay, cool, right? Um, this would be ten, somewhere around 10 to the negative uh, third, and then I have a little bit more going on, so that brings me up to 4. Same thing with here, 10 to the negative fifth, because it's 4 and then a little bit more. And here, I would expect to have 10 to the negative tenth, because it's 9 and then a little bit more. Okay, math is fine. So here's the jam, the, the bigger the uh, pKa, the weaker the acid. See how the K value is down? And that's because it is a negative exponent on a 10. So if you have positive 10 as your pKa, then that's 10 to the negative 10, which is 
point zero 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 half uh, percent that said non zeros and then a one. Okay? Um hey, you're just in time for the party. The party, I mean this. All right, so PKB, same idea. Notice here again the PKB is a uh, acid gets larger, the acid gets weaker, and so look, it's still ten to the negative of this, and so this should be around ten to the negative ninth because that's almost nine. So ten to the negative fifth, negative seventh, negative eighth, and negative nine. If it's above, like <clears throat> if it was exactly four, then the exponent would be four. But if it's anything above, that pushes the exponent up to the next. All right, so that's how to do that. Um, this mathematical relationship here is inversely with the S. Right here? Because the answer, um, that should be 10 to the, to the second, right? Mm, 10 seconds, like 100. Mm. Yeah. But I think feel good about what it said and it works most of the time doubts left doubts left you also have your little base or your coefficient out in front your number like 6.6 times .6 to the negative four are you I guess no I'm still right I'm still right um, yeah I guess because it is that negative number you don't see a negative PKs. Here's the deal. When they're giving you these PKs and PKBs and these are equilibrium problems, how often are you going to deal with strong acids? Because they're never, because they go all the way to dissociation. Do you understand what I'm saying? They go to completion. So you're not going to see a negative that much. So what I told you is still good information. And on the AP exam, they'll give you a range, and if you can eyeball it, you're okay. And that that's like over the top for what you would normally do. But um, yeah, I guess that's that negative number that's giving you all. I'm going to go home and figure that out. Or not. <clears throat> um, but yeah, you're not typically, time out. When we're doing AP exam stuff, like FRQs, there's always an FRQ on an equilibrium. That's a very common, you can see why they would like to ask questions about this, right? Uh, can they ask you a, a legitimate equilibrium problem about hydrochloric acid? Shake your head no. Because it goes to completion. There's a one-way arrow. It might be a titration, and they might do that. We don't even know what I'm talking about yet. That's tomorrow. Uh, but you're going to see your PKA values will be more like around here that you'll have to eyeball. So you'll be good if you'll go with what I said. But that is a good point. Um, anyway, so <clears throat> on your formula sheet, I just showed you guys that um, as far as KA and KB go, um, KA times KB, look under KW. KA times KB is 1 times 10 to the negative 4th. You see that? Right? Um, so let's look at why that is. Um, are y'all with me that ammonia and ammonium, ammonia is a base and this is its conjugate acid. If I brought both of their dissociation um, reactions in water, um, the KB for ammonia is 1 times 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5th, and then there's my reactants over my products, and then this one is equal to 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th, and there's my react, uh, products over my reactants. If I said it wrong a second ago, I'm sorry. Um, but look, let's eyeball this. Negative fifth, negative tenth. When you multiply these together, you get one times ten to the negative fourteenth. Want to prove it to yourself? It'll be fun. Huh? Right, and I'm going to show you that. That's the next slide. Right. Yeah, I got it all figured out. Um, but anyway, go ahead and in your calculator. Prove this to yourself, and, and now it has to be the acid in its conjugate base, or the base in its conjugate acid. You can't just throw up something like, you know, nitric acid and, you know, ammonia. That doesn't work. It has to be the acid-base pair. And ignore the third decimal place, and you get 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Yay! Now let's talk about why that is. Do you remember, do you remember when we did equilibrium and we combined reactions? Do you remember that? Uh -huh. If we combine these two reactions, what do we do with the Ka and the Kb? What would we, we wouldn't add them, we would 
we would multiply them. Do you remember that? Cool. So if I were to combine these two reactions, I would have to multiply their equilibrium expressions. And so when you do that, you know how math works. Like this cancels, the ammonia cancels, the excuse me, the ammonium cancels, the ammonia cancels, and I'm left with hydroxide and hydronium, and those are equal to Kw, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 14, which is you just proved, right? You okay? You look so sad. Um, don't be sad. It's okay. Everything's fine. Kw is what I just told you, K times Kb. That's so 1 times 10 to the negative 14 is K times Kb for acid-base pair. Um, now... PKA and PKW, those are going to add up to 14. Do you know why they add up to 14? Because the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 14 is 14. You good? Chop the tree down, flip the sign. That's what happens when you take a log or a negative log. Um, so again, PKA, mm -mm, PKW, um, PH, POH, 14, PKA, PKB, added up together as 14 and that's all on your formula sheet but those are just some what's what's gonna happen you know how we do when we do like ice tables you just fill in what you know and then you can solve for the rest well what's going to happen is they're going to give you ph and maybe you need poh because it's a base they're going to give you pka but maybe you need pkb right and so you have to use all these little relationships to kind of play that little puzzle game it's going to be so much fun i haven't really gotten started with this lecture yet how you feeling feel okay Cool. We're on slide 14 of 72. Okay. All right, now, this is a little teaser problem so that you don't get your stuff twisted here in a minute. Now, I have sodium hydroxide, right? I have a three and a half molar um, sodium hydroxide solution. Is it a good idea or is it okay for me to just be like POH is equal to, or excuse me, this is what people do. Let me show you what people do. People are like, pH is equal to the negative log of three and a half. Bum, la, la, doo, 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 bum, bum, bum. And then they do that. Has that going to work out? Has, how is that going to work out for you? It's not going to work out very good, is it? So that's why I don't, I don't like to skip steps. If you see me like, I'm over here taking way too long. I don't care. I like to do stuff like this because then when I start to fill it in, maybe my brain will be like, hey, hey girl, that's hydroxide. You don't need to do that. Okay. Um, so, POH is equal to the negative log of three and a half, and that will work. And then what I'm going to have to do? 14 is equal to pH plus POH. Okay. So, why don't y'all take a second and see if you can find the pH of the solution before the real party starts. You can do it on your whiteboard, you can do it wherever, however you want to. <laughs> okay, anyway, 14 is equal to pH plus pOH. So if I'm solving for pH, pH is going to be equal to 14 minus, because I'm going to move that variable over, 14 minus 0.54. Did y'all get these things? Uh, and, but it's minus, but it's minus and minus, right? Yeah, so it's 14.54. Now, Let's talk about this. You need to have some things in your head memorized. Let's, let me tell you what they are. The pH of a one molar sodium, mm -mm, sodium hydroxide solution, a strong base, um, is 14. The pH is 14. The pH of one molar hydrochloric acid is zero. Now, let, 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 think about the beauty of that. Isn't that nice? Is that nice? Is that Z 
zero is one molar hydrochloric acid and 14 is one molar sodium hydroxide. You can probably remember that, right? Cool. Now, this is three and a half molar. Would you expect that the pH should be higher than 14? Yes. Now that's, this is because it's a strong base. So if you would have gotten something like 12, then she went, mm, that's wrong. Or if you screwed up and just plugged it in to the pH and you didn't subtract, and you got the pH was negative 5.4 for a base, at some point in your life, your brain should go, no, that's not right. Okay, so check yourself as you go, uh, because you've seen on these FRQs when you're doing all these steps, one little step, I mean, it could be worth two points, and that's, you don't want to mess up if you don't have to. So there you go, pH, do to do, la, la, la. Now, here's the thing, here's the thing. If we had a weak base, if we had a weak base at equilibrium, would the molarity of the original base, would it be equal to hydroxide at equilibrium? No. So, you can't just put, you hope to God and cross your fingers and legs and eyes that you get a weak, or excuse me, a strong base, but you're not going to, right, most of the time. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make an ice table. So that's where this is about to get real. It's not so bad. Okay, before we move on to that, oh, there was one last slide. I forgot about this. All right, let's think about middle math. No calculators, okay? Ready? Here we go. An acid was dissolved in the water, and the pKb value associated with its conjugate base was found to be 15.5. Now... This is an acid, is it not? Okay, so what's the pKa of the acid? Can you solve for that? Are you able to do that? What's the formula in your formula sheet? pKa plus pKb, this is a capital K, equals 14. So what's a pKa in math class in fourth grade? What would some number plus 15 and a half give me 14? You are so smart. So the pKa is one and a half. Now y'all recall that the larger the pKb, the strong, mm -mm, the weaker the base, and the you know. Um, so if I'm looking at these numbers, the base is weak and the acid is strong. Do you see how I'm doing that? Is that a magic trick? You good? All right, so is the solution going to be acidic or basic? Well, I guess it's going to be acidic, right? Um, and, you know, if you would like to do this better, you can think about this. The Ka for the acid would be, um, what did I say? The pKa was negative one and a half? Is it negative? So that makes the Ka for the acid 10, top, uh, 10 to the 1.5, and it would be positive. So that's going to give me a... a a, a K value larger than one, so it's a strong acid, strongish acid. Uh, is the conjugate base a stronger or a weaker base than water? All right, so um, are y'all good with me that this is a strong acid? So where is the strong base going to be? Is it going to be the water or is it going to be the conjugate base? It's going to be on the same side, so am I not putting this in water and then getting what it breaks down into? So let me show you what I mean. I have an acid plus water. Now notice I'm writing H3O plus instead of H because I chose to write water. Choose to write water, you better write H3O plus. So if you can't think about it in your head and I saw your little blank faces, you couldn't. You can't, you better write it down. So now is a conjugate base a stronger base or a weaker base than water? The conjugate base. Is it on the same side as the acid? Yeah, so is water the stronger base. They're always going to be on the same side. The strong acid and the strong base are on the same side. And um, even that you can think about it that way, or I just told you that it's a strong acid, so the conjugate base would be weak. Okay. How we do it? All right. Now we're going to do fun things. Yay! <laughs> All right, so let me show you how to not do this. Um, it wants me to find the pH of a 2.5 molar solution of Ajax. 
that I wrote and then erased will be equal to 7.24 times 10 to the negative 4. Alright, let me show you how we're going to find the pH now because we cannot just plug that in. It won't work. And I'm going to show you why it won't work and then I'm going to show you how to do it. Alright, so here we go. So I'm going to make myself a little ice table because what I need to be on pH is I need the hydronium ion concentration at equilibrium. That's what I need. So if I make an ice table, and then I'm just going to be like, okay, what do I know? I know that the HF at the beginning is 2.5 molar. I know the water doesn't count, so I just make a squirrely line, cancel that out. I mean, I cancel that out. I'm not putting it in here. It doesn't help. And then I know that this is zero, and I know this is zero. Have I made anybody sad yet? Now I know this is going to go down by x, I know this is going to go up by x, I know this is going to go up by x. And I know at equilibrium, this would be 2 and a half minus x, this would be x, and this would be x. Now look, the hydronium ion concentration, this number, the negative log of this number is the pH. Not the negative log of this number. So we got to do a little math now. I found the K, um, recall that I found the K value was 7.24 times 10 to the negative 4. And that's going to be equal to, I'm going to draw myself like a nice little one right here. And that's going to be equal to, the con and I wrote the equilibrium expression. I'll have to rewrite it again. Like, do you remember rewriting it? It was this and this over that, yeah? 
So won't that be x squared? Am I making, I'll just write x times x, so I don't need to write x times x, products over reactions, right? I don't have any coefficients, so I don't have a power. And I can ignore this minus x because it is a weak acid, and the Ka value is less than 10 to the negative 4, or right at 10 to the negative 4. Can I solve for x now? Yeah. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 and a half. I get 1.81 1 times 10 to the negative third is equal to x squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And I get x is equal to 4.25. Two six, I should say, four point two six times ten to the negative second. Now, when you get x, you feel like you're in math class. You're like, yeah, I'm done. No, you're not. That x is. This is a beautiful part. That x is the hydronium ion concentration. So, has everybody solved for x and you feel happy about it? Good. Might need help finding x. So now, to find the pH, I am going to use the pH formula. pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. I should make that a square bracket. And so pH is equal to the negative log of x, which is 4.26 times 10 to the negative second. And then I'm going to push the buttons in my calculator. And I find that the pH is 1.37. Recall that on pH, the decimal places are your sig figs, and that has two sig figs, and that has two sig figs. Now let's think about this answer. Does it make sense? It was an acid. Does it make sense that the pH would be 1? Now I told you that hydrochloric acid, which is a very strong acid, has a pH of 0 at uh, 1 molar. This is two and a half molar, and it's a to the negative four to the negative fifth. It's, it's kind of it's a weak acid, but it's kind of one of the middle of the road acids. It's not super weak, um, so this does make sense. Right? How do you feel about that? A lot of steps. At any point when you just go on autopilot, you forget what you're doing and why you're doing it. You're going to have problems. Um, so just help yourself through it. What am I? What am I really trying to do here? You know. Um, so to kind of scroll through how they did it, I made an ice table. It's good times. <clears throat> and I did all the. I did all this. All right. So let's check this out. This is the same thing I just did, but it's a different acid. It's a weaker acid. So let's talk about what we should get as an answer. The last solution was two and a half molar, and the Ka value, or the pKa value, what was the pKa value of it? It was like five or something, wasn't it? I mean, I'm estimating. The Ka was negative four, so it's either four or five. What was it? 3.14. Okay, so, all right, that makes sense. But see how this pKa is bigger? That means this acid is weaker. So, our answer, when we get done, because this has a lower molarity and it has a higher pKa than the last problem, our answer should be more than 1.37, and it is an acid, so it should be less than 7. All right, so you got to make sure that you're thinking about it. Do you want me to do this for you, or would you like to try it? I will do it, but would you, would you want me to talk you through one more? You good? All right, go ahead and give it a whirl, and I will, did anybody want me to say it out loud? I'll work it out silently. You want me to do it? Okay. Let me let everybody get like a little heads up. And every few minutes or every minute or two, I will um, I say, well, did you get this? Did you get that? So take a head start.
units that are Ka value, you have to think about um, the pKa being the negative exponent on a 10, and that's pretty close, so that makes sense, okay? Um, now what you need to do is, this is the left-hand side of the equation, you're going to write the equilibrium expression for the right-hand side of the equation, and now you're going to make an ice table to find this, and that concentration will go into the pH formula, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an ice table now. And then, you know, you're sitting there and you're like, I don't know what to do. So fill in what you know. These are going to go by X, go up by X, this is going to go down by X. And so our pKa was 4. When you write the equilibrium expression, you end up getting x times x, right? The reactants over, excuse me, the products over the reactants. And we can ignore that x. And so that's equal to um, I'm having to do like a lot of work with my pen right now. That's equal to the Ka value, which was 4.90 times 10 to the negative 10. So now I'm going to solve for x. Um, I'm going to go to another screen. I don't know. It was at 1.5. It was 1.5. I'm going to multiply both sides by 1.5. So let me scroll through what they did. It's very similar to what I did. So, yeah, I just didn't talk through it. All right, um, on this one, they're not on the AP exam. I don't think that they will give you something where it says, you know, 
0.767% of, of an acid uh, uh, dissociates or ionizes, but if 0.767% did ionize, let's think about where this goes, okay? Um, I have a 0 0.300 molar solution of acetic acid. Once we find Ka and all this other stuff. Well, that's a lot of stuff up there, but you know one thing for sure. You know this, right? And you know this, and you know this, and you know this, and you know this, and you know this. The change here, will that not be the part that ionizes? So, if I have 0.676% of that, what am I about to do in my calculator? Multiply. And you can't just multiply point. So common error. When you have a decimal already, people will just take 0.767 times. But you still got to do the decimal place twice. So 0.00767 times that, that will be the part that dissociates, and that will be my minus x. You, I don't think they're going to ask you about what the percentage is. So I'm just showing you this part in case you see it, but I don't think you will. But where we're going is, is worth going. So um, this will be my x, and so let's go ahead and get that. Three times. So x, this this x here, x is equal to two point three oh one times ten to the negative third. How does that make you feel? Yes. Yes, but here's the here's the deal. On acid base equilibrium, even if you have a diprotic acid, which is to say that I have two hydrogens and sulfuric acid, H2SO4, it will only use one hydrogen at a time. So, when we're doing acid base equilibrium problems, you will never have any coefficients. Do you understand why you only need to use one hydrogen? So, is this going to Um, oh, do you mean like CA uh, or like ca calcium hydroxide? Yeah. Um, but it's, here's the thing, if it's a strong base, you won't have to do an equilibrium problem for it. So, yeah. Uh, but you're right, and that will come into play when we get to titrations, because we'll have to take that into account. But for these kinds of problems, you won't have any coefficients. Um, all right, so that was X. So 0 0.30 minus that number is 2.977 times 10 to the negative first. And then this is obviously x, right, because I added x. Are y'all with me still? Now, why don't we just do that? What were we even trying to do? Find the Ka value. If you have everything in this equilibrium line, can you find the Ka value? Can you write a Ka expression? Yep. So find the Ka value, and I also want you to find the pH. You have everything you need up here to find pH? Yep. Do it to it. Two things. Huh? Oh, yeah. We were learning about why the holes are closed in AP Environmental Science. Please take me there. Take me there. Santa Claus was there. He's in there. I don't know. I'm just um, I'm going to make myself one of those little boxes like I do. I need some room. That's the problem. I need that slide.
understand why I'm squaring this. It's an overhead thing. So that's your pay value. So when you did that, what did you get? Should be like a five or four. Eight. You have receipt acid? Oh, I'm thinking PK. Yeah, I'm just thinking PK, which I was right. But it's ten to the negative fourth is different than receipt acid. Okay. And what is it? The first part, four something. What did I don't get for the K? I only said I don't have this thing in the whole world memorized. You know what I have memorized? I have the PK value is four point something with a I don't know. And so that's what I was thinking. You're fine. Um so that's the KA value for acetic acid. I knew this number and I was trying to fudge the rest. I don't know everything. Um, but then the pH is going to be pH is equal to the negative log of this, right? The, not the x, but this. Um, and does everybody understand why? Okay. Negative log of 2.3 I did it. The pH is 2.68. 63. All right, so the pH is 2.64. Did y'all get that? Are y'all okay? I'm not okay, apparently. Um, you feel alive? I should have had three six six. So it's two point six three eight is the answer. Um it should have three sig figs though, seriously, because this is three and this is three, and then that's not a that's not part of it. Like we're not using twenty five degrees in this math problem, are we? So it should be um two point six three eight. Remember the decimal places on um pH are the only significant figures. Um a little bit tonight, but you're not, when you, when you change the temperature, you're just basically going to have to do a whole other problem because the K value will change. So it's not like you're going to just magically change it. No, you just about to have to do some more work. Um, sorry. I know awesome is right. This is what I just did. <laughs> okay, let's talk about this one. I have ammonia. I put it in water. Ammonia is a base, right? Okay. And I can tell ammonia is a base. Because it has a pKb value. So the pKb of ammonia is 4.74. So that's a kind of a biggish number. So this is going to be six. These are things. The, the Kb for this is around 10 to the negative fourth or fifth, right? Still in me there. Yeah. Um, so that's a weak base. Now, what, what am I talking about? Find the pH. Right? So in your head, you're like, okay, I'm going to have to do things with this. Because this is this is a base, and they're wanting the acidity scale of it. So you're gonna have to use one of those relationships: pH plus pOH is 14, or pKb, whatever. Okay. So of a three and a half molar solution of ammonia, I can't do anything with this until I make an ice table. And when I make an ice table, um, I'm gonna at the bottom. This will be my magic. Okay, this will be like my magic ticket to being able to find POH, won't it? Like the equilibrium part of this. That'll help me get find POH. And then I can do 14 minus it, right? And then be good. All right, now here's the deal. Um, but when we do all that math and I say, well, we do need to have a, a KB value. So let's first find the PK. Find the KB. So go ahead and do that. And then I'll show you how to do the other things. So you, can, you should be able to find the KB at this point in your life, hopefully.
are getting KB. Alright, so now you need to set up an ice table. And the reason we're going to set up an ice table is because there, are, there is no information here for me to find the POH or pH. If I plug three and a half in, might as well just go ahead and go home. Okay? Um, oh, I need to make an ice table. I don't know what I'm doing. Alright, so I'm just going to make my ice table right here. And I do know that the initial concentration of ammonia is three and a half. This is not going to be a thing. Um, this is going to be zero, and this is going to be zero. And then you can find it. Like you got, if you're asked for KB, then you're gonna have to know everything on this side. And so at that point, we did subtract the real small change. Mm -hmm. So that's if you know it. If you know it, don't ignore it. But yes, here you did. Um, anyway, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh yes. Uh, so KB, which is 1.81 times two times ten to the negative fifth is equal to the concentration of ammonia, ammonium, I'm sorry, and hydroxide applied together over ammonia. I wish those things were just a little more similar. That would be cool. Be sarcastic. Um, and so I'm going to have basically x squared over, oh, sorry, three and a half. So now I can solve for x. So can y'all solve for x without my assistance? Times three and a half, right? And I gotta take the square root. Okay. And I found x to be 7.98 times 10 to the negative third. So, listen, it wants the pH. What you're going to do when I'm not standing in front of you telling you what to do is you're going to plug in 7.98, take the negative log of it, and feel real good about yourself after doing a page worth of math. So, this is what you should do. Do y'all have all this? Okay. So, don't, don't be lazy. Be like, okay, so pOH is equal to the negative log of... And of course, depending on how nerdy you are and how you think, I mean, there's a lot of different ways you could go about this at this point. You could find, you could take one times 10 to the negative 14th and divide it by this and get hydro, hyd hydrogen. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's kind of like, if you think outside the box a little bit. So you could do that if you want to. But I'm just going to stick with one way and be consistent because I think that's better. Um, so anyway, the negative log of this answer is and I'm not done yet so my sig figs aren't a big deal um, so I have 14 equals 2.097 uh, plus the pH so pH is equal to 14 minus So the pH is equal to eleven point nine. And that number should make sense. If you mess it up and you go autopilot and you accidentally take the pH of the hydroxide ion concentration, the hydroxide ion concentration of pH, and you get 
you know, two in your head because you can breathe and think. You should say, hmm, a bass won't make a pH of two. And at that point in your life, you'll realize you screwed up. But if you go on autopilot and you don't think while you're doing these, you're going to do a lot of work for nothing. All right? So anyway, pH is 11.90, which does make sense for a leaf base. Um, how we feeling? Kind of like backwards, right? I mean, you make an ice, listen, you don't know how to do an equilibrium problem with acid and base. You make an ice table, you write the equilibrium expression, you start filling stuff in, and it'll come to you. I'm not a magic theory. I don't know how to do this either. You just, that's how to do. All right, they're still doing math. I still, yeah, cool. All right, so <clears throat> a 0.15 molar ammonia solution has a pH of 8.75. Uh, find KB. All right, now, do you see how ammonia is a base? And do you know how I can tell it's a base? Because it says KB. <laughs> Plus ammonia is a base. Um, so what I have to do here is if I find... If I find pOH, right? All right, check, 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 check me out. To find KB, I'm just gonna make all this go away. I gotta, I gotta help y'all out for a second. If I wanna find KB, I don't have a numerical KB, so I need KB is equal to the concentrations of all of this. Where am I find these numbers? Where can I find these concentrations? Where can I find that? In an ice table. So what you're going to do is you're got to find an ice. Excuse me, you're about to make an ice table, right? Yeah. So when you make an ice table, you will be able to in your ice table. Let's go ahead and make an ice table. I shouldn't have erased that white box, but it is what it is. In my ice table, you guys, this number right here, the concentration of OH, the negative log, and I should point down here, right? The negative log of this answer is equal to the pOH, is it not? So, what is the pOH? Something plus some amount of money plus eight dollars and seventy-five cents is fourteen dollars. Doesn't that be five dollars and a quarter? Yep. So fourteen is equal to eight point seven five plus POH. POH is equal to five point two five. Huh? Are y'all good with the POH being five point two five? Alright, now listen. Do your eyes table and the negative log of this is 5.25. See what I'm saying? If you don't make an ice table, when you get stuck, you'll come back. All right? So we can fill in this. Less water, no. We can go zero plus x plus x minus x. Okay, so guess what NH4 is as well? 
Yay. It's the same thing. Now here, if it makes you feel happy inside, you can subtract this number from that number, but mathematically it won't matter when you do that. So I'm not going to. Um, can we find KB? Do we have this whole bottom row? So now you can find KB, and that's how to do that. So KB will be equal to, and I've already written my equilibrium expression at this point in my life, but it's equal to 5.625, or 5.625 times 10 to the negative 6, and that'll be squared, and then it'll be divided by 0.15. And KB is 2.11 times 10 to the negative 10. And the answer makes sense because it's a, it's a root term. We have gotten 2 times 10 to the 47th, then I will go, and that's not right, this is a root base, okay? Um, so these are just little puzzles, right? And if you kind of go with what you have, you'll be able to figure it out. Can you answer any questions about this one? A lot of fun. A lot, a lot of fun here. Uh, I look really sad about it. So I'll kind of scroll through this. They didn't make an ice table. I'm going to make an ice table. I don't care. Um, if you're really good at math, I will tell you a shortcut, and I'm not going to say it, but more than one time, and uh, I don't recommend it. These um, Ka and Kbs, they're always x squared over the initial concentration of your weak acid and base. Did you see how that works? And if you don't, I'm not telling you again, and don't do it that way. So you don't have to make ice. If you know that, then okay, yeah. But I, I don't recommend that. All right, so anyway, I already did all this. Oh. H2SO4, sulfuric acid and carbonic acid, um, or it, uh, phosphoric acid. You know, you, sometimes you have more than one hydrogen, right? And so they're only going to lose one hydrogen at a time. And this is what's on the AP exam that you need to know. Carbonic acid is going to dissociate to produce one uh, hydrogen ion and then bicarbonate. That has its own Ka value. The second dissociation will be of the bicarbonate, which is still an acid, okay? And it will have its own Ka value. The first Ka value is always greater than the second Ka value. This is a very common multiple choice question on my test and the AP exam. This is smaller though. So it's exactly the opposite of that. Um, it's okay. <laughs> I didn't mean to shoot you down. I'm sorry. So again... The Ka will always be greater than the K, K1 will always be greater than the K2. And this would be the dissociation of, dissociation of the first hydrogen and the dissociation of the second hydrogen. Um, most of the hydrogens in solution are going to come from the first one anyway because the second dissociation constant will be so small that when y'all solve them for a pH of sulfuric acid, you don't have to really worry about that second one so much. So that's good news for you, okay? But this is the thing. They need you to know this, or they're going to make sure you know it by asking questions about it. All right, so the good news for you guys is you have 15 minutes to work instead of negative 2 minutes to work on your second period. Um, let me go ahead and tell you what we're skipping. This is a lot of work, and tomorrow when you come in, do you know how this talked the whole time and it was a bunch of stuff? I'm going to do that again tomorrow. So... I'm going to need you to do your homework every night, otherwise you're going to cry or fail. Your choice. Or just do your homework like a normal person, uh, abnormal person. Y'all can skip 8 through 10, 16 through 20, and 23 and 24. Y'all can skip those. The rest of it you got to do, and it's going to take you, well, some people got to seem about halfway done during lockout period, so you should have one or two hours of homework tonight. As far as your next chapter quiz, it'll be on Monday. I haven't quite finished that yet. Uh, as far as your homework, I feel like you aren't going to have time to do it tonight anyway because you're about to have to do this, just to be real with you. Um, I told y'all it was going to be like this, and I guess I'm sorry. Uh, I am. I have a couple people out today, so I am going to go ahead and put up the answer key, um, and I'm going to let it play. So go ahead and get your phones out.
Again, we're skipping 8 to 10, 16 through 20, and 23 and 24. Y'all ready? We... This inch key is 11 pages long. There was one that was really important. I think it was number five. There's one about water and changing the temperature of water, and that's on the AP exam every year. I think it's number five. I'll check when I'm done talking. Try that one, get confused, and then I need to explain it to you tomorrow. It's very important. So I said 23 and 24, you can skip. So, all right, I think it's number five. Can I check? Do you mind? It is number, yes, it is number five. Super important. That's kind of the guaranteed on the AP exam question.